Hey. Hey, everybody. I just saw that everybody's scoping, so I don't know if anyone's going to show up here. Hi, Judy. I'm packing my work for the Clay Studio. Um, actually, I'm glad you're here because I have some questions that I was hoping some of you guys could help me out with. Um, Judy, go ahead and, and share this for me. You're at your class studio. Are you working or teaching, Judy? Hey, Jet. Thanks for joining. Hey, Emily. Thanks for inviting followers. So, doing that when you get home. Right. So, I have the two pieces. I'll show you them here. These are the two pieces that I'm getting ready to pack and ship. Uh, thanks for all the followers, you guys. So, there's this plate and its friend plate. So these two plates that I made, which were, um, I was scoping how to make these last week, you know, with the pressed out form and the slab built form and the hand built bottom. And then I did my little hanger doohickey. And I'm trying to play with the hanger issue because I'm not, I like this one better than what I had before. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. So I'm packing this piece, both these pieces, but I have that question of pricing. Um, Thank you. Thanks, you guys. So the, the question I always run into is these pieces, they are ceramic, but they work more like a painting. You know, they're not really functional as a plate. This isn't a plate that is quickly made. Um, not that anybody quickly makes their work, but this plate is not made um, in production. Your mom loves purple. And this fires, this one was in the kiln nine times to get the firing. So. I started it um, back beginning of March. So it took between the meaning, beginning of March till just a couple weeks ago to finish it. So over a month at, um, of work to do this. And the same with this one here. So my, my painter friends, it's a combination of decal, right? So the soldier is my drawing that I've made a laser decal of. Well, that's the thing. What is the price, right? So the laser the decal is the soldier and the Humvee that I hand color with China paint to match the vintage commercial decals, which are the flowers. And then I gold luster the whole piece on the rim for that one. And on this one, the gold luster is just on the grenades, but there's still a lot of gold. So these function as paintings, and they're about 12, thank, thank you, Jamie. They're about 12 and a half inches they're about 12 and a half inches across that, you know, by about two on this one, two and a half inches deep. And my painter friends price their work two ways to look at it. Yeah, let, wait, hold that. Um, so hold that thought, Judy. I'm going to just quickly say this and then you can, um, yeah, about pricing. And then you can tell me my painter friends price their work at $100 per square inch, right? So 12 and a half, it should be $1,200. But... So $1,200 is what the price should be on a piece like this if, it's a, if it was a painting of this size, right? That's how they would price a painting. Now granted, uh, um, that is just how they price their work. And it, I've heard it from many painters, and it's a good way to start. Now, if you're in high demand, of course you increase your prices, right? Well, if you're going to buy a plate that's 12 and a half inches across, $1,200 is pretty pricey. I mean, you're looking at maybe $200, $150, depending on the potter who makes it, if you look at it as pottery. So I have to decide, how am I looking at this work? Am I looking at this work as pottery? That's something you, um, I don't understand what that is. Oh, it's not, a me is friend. Um, so I, I kind of split the difference. So a piece like this, Thank you. So something like this, I paying by the square foot also when you buy a building, right? So I split the difference. I'm not going to I'm not going to charge $1200 yet for this work because it's not in such demand, although who knows as time goes on, right? I mean, this is this works pretty new. It's only a I've been making work in this style for the last year as this and this idea I just started 2 years ago of using the female soldiers. Pricing by volume I know, but these are one of a kind and they take so long to make and, and they really are like um, like a painting. So anyhow, I'm thinking 700 for a piece like this, seven to eight. 
And when I send it to a gallery, which I'm going to, they get half. So I get $350. That's what I get for this. Plus, I have to pay to ship it to them. They would love it. Yeah, so by the time all said, everything's all said and done, I'm going to get about $300 for this piece, which I spent at least eight weeks making. And I, I don't know. So that's, that's the thing. Hours. Hours. Yeah, we, we don't even have to uh, quanti like use weeks. We could use hours because layers and layers of china paint to build up the color and the gold. I know. That's the standard, right? Half. Right, and so when I sell um, small pieces, it's the same thing. So here's, here's, thank you. So here's a, here's a piece I just got back from a show in LA. So this little guy, these are my little small plates with the gold grenade. And I sell these for $95. So when I sell these for $95, I get half that. With that after shipping, I get $40 which isn't much and these are china painted as well and they have the gold luster and the grenade and actually I just got back 80 I have 80 of these tiny little plates half's not enough I know that just came from a show that closed so I'm gonna put not all 80 but I think I'm gonna put like 10 or 15 up on my Etsy site yeah how long am I spending too long so I'm gonna put them on my Etsy site and then when I sell them there I I, I get all the money, right? I get to keep it all. So if I sell the ones with the grenades, the firing costs, I know, Judy. So the grenade ones are 95, and then I also do them without grenades for 75. So same kind of idea, right? And then I sell them myself on Etsy. And I don't know, it's, it's this question. And as, a, um, as an artist that works in a medium like ceramics, which is functional and people think People think spending $40 on a cup is too much. Yeah, my prices are the same. No, no, yeah, these. So when I sell these in galleries, you could refer customers to me. Right. So these just came out of a show where they were $95 to, um, yeah. And I do commit to the fine art world with this type of work, Judy. Like, this is considered fine art. And that's why I put the prices. It's just my concern is when I send it to the clay studio... When I send it to the Clay Studio, it's a ceramic um, gallery, and yeah, Clay people might not get it. They might not get the price because they might say, well, that's just a 12 and a half inch plate. Wicked stepchildren. That's, that's us, the wicked stepchildren. So I just did a wedding plate, same size as this, custom with the names and everything on it, and that was around, should have been around 200 the same size, but I didn't have nearly the amount of hours in that piece as I did this. And I did too, yeah, but I can't charge her for the second. That was my screw up. Right. So I'm thinking I'm going to do art markets dumb. I know. Well, so here's the thing. When I started making this work, I was in graduate school and I was doing painting. I had done ceramics in undergrad and painting. And when I left uh, and I finished my undergrad degree, I decided to go ceramics. And so I did pottery full time for five years before going to graduate school. And at grad school, I left clay and I painted. I just, I just became a painter. And I started using this idea and I went back to ceramic because this idea behind this work is about serving and gender roles and, and the traditional role of the woman in the home where she's serving the meal. So what would you use to serve a meal on? You would use a platter or a plate, right? So this became my canvas. Yeah, so I, I used the porcelain plate as a symbol, as a canvas, not really because of ceramic. I know, Karen, I, I, I love functional work and I buy a lot of functional pottery and I make, my, I make functional pottery and I price it the same as other functional potters do for that particular work. But on this work, it's a whole different thing. Um, so focus may be more contemporary art gallery and it is right. And it is, it really is. So I made the decision to keep working on clay as the canvas instead of choosing to use a canvas, right? I could have just painted. I mean, this image is strong and powerful and I have done paintings of this. I've done what I do watercolors where I do the drawings and then I watercolor the flowers in. And so I have a painting clay versus other medium. Right. It's, it's about collectors. You're right. And it's building up collectors, which is hard to do. 
no man stuff, so I have to go cupcake. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's, you know, anyhow, meaning can be layered with function. Exactly. But there's less collectors, and it's hard to find people who appreciate it because they see it as clay. They, you know, the average art collector is going to see a plate and think, I'm going to eat off that. Well, this, this piece is not. You, you could lower price collectors in clay. I know. You could even eat off this. I wouldn't. I mean, um, it's not really meant to be eaten off. It's, it's a wall piece. So, anyhow. Oh, wait. I have to block that person. Sorry. You can't ask people that. <laughs> so, anyhow. This is the price thing that I'm, I'm having a dilemma of. I'm thinking between seven and 800 on this because what ends up happening is I price it so less sale, say high price it. I know, I mean, I'd love to say 1200, but I'll never sell it, right? I mean, not, not today, not in the next, you know, not the show. Um, and it's not necessarily about selling, thank you, yeah, less sales at higher prices. prices. It's not, I mean, we want to sell. I want to sell my work. I want to make a living out of off my work. But I don't want to price it just to sell it, right? I don't want to just sell this work, so I'm going to price it so low. In installments. People can pay in installments. Could pay me in installments if they bought it from me directly, you know. Um, the big question, yes, Judy? Tell me your big question. Had to, hard to price. It's so hard to price. So, so hard to price. Um, I think it's hard for everyone to price, even if you do functional, you know, just a mug. If you priced it, I hate pricing. Yeah, I, I think we all hate pricing. It's just, you know, sometimes I think it's better if you have a gallery that really represents you well and prices your work for you, you know, and they go out and push the work and they know what they can get and they seek out collectors. I haven't found, um, yeah. So there's the back with the foot. Here's the hanger. So it hangs that way. I will sell more, I know. And there's my signature with the date and the title of the piece on it. I know, but I don't, I don't want to be, I can't be making tons of these in production. They just don't work that way. That's not how these pieces are meant to be. Cause of, one, because of the time commitment, and two, that's not, that's not what they're about based on forms keep different forms in perspective yeah gallery versus booth yeah I, I only sell in galleries or online or in my studio I don't do craft fairs or art sales or booths or anything anymore I stopped doing that um, when I started grad school because um, this work won't sell there and I can't right not clay galleries installments on my website I could do that too right so I don't know. The pricing is such a big thing. That's the way it's seen by the, the public. You're absolutely right. Undervalue. And we all, I think, especially if you work in a craft-based medium um, that's marginalized, you do underprice. We all do. Or not on plates, like on a vase. Do you think? Do you think the plate, Jamie, you think the plate brings the price down? Um, how much does it weigh? Mm, I don't know. I can't price it by weight, though. It doesn't weigh more than a couple pounds. It's not very heavy. And I do work on, on vases. You're French. Bonjour. Ça va? That's about the end of my French. I'll, so I'll show you a vase. A grab vase. So here's a vase for... And these are a pair. There's two. More money in the living room than the kitchen. Well... These are meant to hang like in your in your living room above your sofa or in your you know on the wall. So they're not really a kitchen piece. So this is um this is a urn, it's a pair, there's two. It is a bullet knob, right. The knob's a bullet. Right. And so it has a soldier. Um actually it's the same image I used on the other one. So it's the soldier with the roses, and all the dots you're seeing are gold luster. So that's gold on the whole piece, and then there's little roses, and if we spin it around. So this is, maybe you try a few, right? And I do pieces that aren't plates. So I have this, and it's a pair, and it's 2400 for the pair, because they are this, they're two very similar urns, 
and there are mantles set. And so um, wall pieces that are not wall pieces that are not plates, maybe a, just a slab. Yeah, but then why not just use a canvas if they're why vase um, vases do take a bit longer. Yes, because the um, you know throwing and adding a adding a lid and and all that. Right, like a slab. But then, it, Judy, if I'm just going to make a slab, what's the point of the slab, right? If if I just make a slab, why not just use a canvas? Why not just use a just anything to paint to paint the image on? It doesn't have to be ceramic. The whole point behind the work is the serving plate or platter. Um, this luster is 22 carat luster, actually. I talk too much. <laughs> I thought that was the point of the scope. Um, too funny. Yeah. So this is, this is 22 karat gold on them. Anyhow, the pricing issue is huge. Trying to think out of the box. I know. Um, yeah, I know. And I don't think I, uh, blocked them because I just, whatever. To keep time. <laughs> I'm explaining stuff. I gotta talk. I'm gonna explain it. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, thanks, guys. I didn't get him, but hopefully he's gone. So anyhow, pricing is the big issue. You know, painters with their one square inch. I didn't see that. No, but I, I guess you know, Judy. I, I can guess. So I make my feet, like I showed the other week in my scope, and I put two holes in it. Oh, it was his name. I didn't even read his name because it's so tiny. And I use picture hanging wire. Let me get in close so you can see it. So this is a loop that I've twisted. It's kind of this crazy thing I came up with. I'm not sure if I love it. Um, I don't know if it was on here or somewhere. Maybe it was you, Judy. Did you say you liked the hanging inside the foot, not outside the foot? We've talked about the hanging... Um, you know, when it's on the wall, you see this piece, right? No, it wasn't you. Okay, so somebody was talking to me somewhere. You like it not showing, right? So I would have to put holes here and here and string it across. Um, I do have Instagram. It's on my profile. It's J Putnam Phillips. You can find me there. Yeah, I undercut and then it hangs on that with a thicker foot here. Yeah, you're right. I I like I like this, but I I am still worried that the undercut will um you only buy if it comes with me. <laughs> well, I tell you what, all the images that I use are self-portraits. That's myself. So, if you buy my work, you actually do get me in a way, right? You what's your other idea, Judy? Oh, I just saw uh, Keep doing the plates. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep doing the plates. And then what? And then what other than keep doing the plates? But present them in a frame. So like a wooden frame? Yeah. Like flat, no foot or anything? Like have a flat plate mounted on something? Like, like a box they sit in? Yeah. That's an whole other idea, though. I have to think about it. Judy could be a kid. I love Judy. Uh, I just saw that Adam Field is doing a scope at a museum, guys, so I know everybody's going to bail. Talk about painting. Right. I mean, so these pieces do, they function as paintings, is the way I look at it. I don't know. A hook on dry. Oh, I missed that. Um, yeah, I recommend a hook. Actually, hold on, I'll show you what I recommend. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. I'll show you what I recommend for hanging. And when I send them to galleries, I send my hangers with them. And I've got a couple here. So these are just uh, picture frame, picture hanging hooks. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm not sure how to. Uh, maybe if I hold it like that. See that little guy? The nail goes in here. And this hook, I could make a French cleat. You're absolutely right. Okay, so they're two different sizes depending on the plate. And you can get little ones to lay flush. Right. Right. Well, this has, so here it is hanging. 
the ook. You're right, they're ook. So here's hanging. This one's too tall. See how it hangs up too high? So I would use, and I have multiple heights. This one will work with this. Because when it's hanging on the wall, you don't want to see that. And they don't, they hang flush on the wall with this hanger. My sushi plate, thank you. Yeah, it, it hangs flush. It's not a problem. Nope, what? So, anyhow, I've got a bright... You see it from the side. It's true. You do see it from the side. Um, I'm not totally bothered by that to the point where I've got to do something yet for it. We'll see how time goes on if it becomes an issue for me. Um, but what I really need to do today... You're super crazy. I know. Well, I think you're a little more OCD than me, which is kind of hard because I'm kind of very OCD. So, <laughs> but you are. So I got to price these and I'm thinking, mm, I'm thinking like 700 to 800. And then when, we'll see. I don't know if you're spending money. Bonjour. Thanks for, thanks for watching. So what do you think, Judy? Anybody else out there pricing for work? more contemporary that way I know well my gut said eight on these hi Joe yeah so here's the other one right here ready ready for hanging yeah my gallery takes 50% and I have to ship it to the gallery and everything it'll be about these two are going together so packing materials and everything about fifty dollars is ten euros <laughs> Uh, maybe that might be a, 10 euros might be a little low I don't know maybe just a little with the exchange rate and everything um I know I know making sure I'm covered I, right well so I just had a show in um, at Burlington City Arts and they sold a bunch of my pieces so I had plates you you think Klein once said said what or someone else I had these at 700 and I sold them there um, and I put more work into these here that are in front of me right now so I'm not going down from seven I'm definitely um, I'm thinking I have to go at least seven if not more on scholarship with others I miss that I miss that thing yeah I mean it's different when you make I do and not all pots are the same. And just because this is a plate, it's, um, you know, not the same plate as someone else would make. Bonjour. Hello. Thanks for tuning in. So what I planned to show was my packing um, situation here, which make less per hour. You're right, Judy. And so all I was going to, when you say 770, oh, I mean 700, right? We just packed sculpture for Encica, the most, number 6,000. Yeah, yeah. So these, about 700, and I just had a show where I was selling them for seven. Um, and I sell the smaller ones, has to be more, thank you. Yeah, I, I sell these for 95, the small plates, with the grenades. And when they don't have grenades, um, Depending on gold, if I put gold, they're still 95. It's the gold that really drives the price up on some things. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I keep showing them. It's like show and tell here. So I'm going to pack these. That's really what this is all about, right? Packing, how to pack your work for shipping. Okay, you totally do that. Um, is Gartha, hey, Ahmed, is price at 950, you think? Yours, Judy, or mine? Is Garth Johnson? Garth Johnson's at ASU, and I know him. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tell him they should totally collect some of my pieces. It'd be great. I'd love to to come out there. Um, we talked a little in Sika about it. So I'm thinking a a. I was thinking twelve hundred. If you go with the painters, shipping's not cheap. No. If you go with the pricing structure that painters use, which is a hundred dollars per square inch, at twelve and a half inches across um, these should be twelve hundred dollars now that's just a random you know a friend of mine's a painter her and her painter friends that's what they paint set it at when I do paintings uh, I don't necessarily always 
well, you should mention me to him. I mean, he knows me, um, but maybe another person, you know, whispering my name in his ear will, will help push him along, right? I think it's totally random, too. I think also it depends on the piece. Like, I, I absolutely love this piece. Like, I almost didn't even want to enter it. <laughs> Thanks, James. I almost didn't want to enter this piece because I put so many hours into the china paint on her. Um, you know, if you look at the subtlety on her helmet, this blush of color to match these, you know. We're, we're talking... I did at least nine firings. I might have done 10 or 11. I can't remember. I lost track because to build up that, that depth, you've got to fire. So I, I wanted to keep it, but it's a really great piece, so I want to put it out in the world. Judy said 15. Did you say 1,500, Judy? Thank you. Thanks. Right. And, and you know, this piece, the funny thing is, I spent almost as much time, you meant high, Okay, I spent almost as much time making this piece as the other one, but I don't have that same connection. I like it. I think it's a great piece, but for some reason, the other one I really love. Right, so if it sells, if it sells, I won't be sad. You're right, and that's the thing. I, I sell pieces sometimes, and I feel that I, I wish I hadn't have sold them. I don't know if other artists out there have regret. Is that like seller's regret? There's something else. Right. So I'm going to pack these guys. Then if anybody else um, wants to chime in about pricing, we can continue with that. Or I'm just going to show you my shipping situation. Um, right. And I am in museums. I just had a show at the San Francisco Museum of Craft and Design and the Los Angeles Craft and Folk Art Museum. And I have an exhibition opening up at the Racine Museum of Art in Racine, Wisconsin called Go for Broke in um that opens up in may so right so i have work there and and right now i show my work mostly in museums that's mostly where the work goes is on exhibition and they're usually large pieces so this a plate like this would usually not be by itself in a museum it would have 30 or so more and it would be installed in a wall um, installation in a pattern right Right, so I don't usually sell one. So to have two pieces available in a show is, is, and available for purchase is rare. They don't have to buy the whole installation. They can buy just one piece. So if you look at it that way, they're getting a really good deal. Yeah, I, so I'm getting work back from a show that had 31 plates, and I think I sold 12 out of that 31. And a couple of them were little guys. Why can they do that? So a couple of them were little guys. Um, I sold a big, a couple big pieces, and then most of them were actually the 10-inch size. So, which is um, here, this size. I sold about eight. I sold about eight of this size as a series, right? Like it's one big painting. Well, then they would right. So if I sold 31 plates as, and it was the installation I just took down is 17 feet long. So it's a 17 foot long piece of art by eight and a half feet tall. It's really, really big, like a triptych. Well, if I set them up like that, right, the middle price sells the most. Yeah, so these were three, 300 for this smaller size. And I sold a bunch, would not sell by the panel. No, so I price things mostly individual or as the whole installation, depending on the piece, depending on how it is. And it's hard to compare, Judy. I feel like I'm having this private combo with you and everybody else just hanging out listening. All right, so I'm actually going to pack this. It's going. No, don't leave. I wasn't saying leave, Judy. You stay. It's good. I, I don't get to talk to you enough. Um, yeah. So I'm going to pack these, and the way I pack them, this is the boring part, right? Yay, packing is you need lots of bubble wrap, and I have lots and lots and lots of bubble wrap. <laughs> so, yeah, keep talking. And I have a box with packing peanuts already in it, and I have a bigger box also with packing peanuts already in it. Right? So that's the start of the packing peanuts. 
So this, this plate is small or big, your preference. We're going to use both. We double box when you ship ceramics. Got to use both those boxes. So this is a 12 inch wide plate and my box here is 14 inches. So I have an extra inch on each side and that's for the first box, the inner box. And then my outer box is 20 inches wide, so I'll have a space. Oh, so when a gallery doesn't allow peanuts, you beg them to take your work anyways. No. You, um, you put them in plastic bags. So you just use um, any plastic bag that you have and you just seal it shut, tape it shut if it doesn't seal itself. <laughs> I hate it when they don't take peanuts because I really like using them. Um, they're easy to get a hold of. Yeah. Wrap them in pla wrap it in a seal it up in a plastic bag. Now you could also use this stuff if you cannot get peanuts or don't like peanuts or have an issue with packing peanuts. You can get this. So this is like air pillows, packing air pillows, but you can, you know, make fun dress accessories with. But this stuff's huge. It takes a ton of space to store, and I just don't get it a lot. Yeah. So whenever I get a pack, like something comes to me with this in it, I save it. But other than that, I use packing peanuts in bubble. Lots and lots of bubble. You need lots of bubble. I've never, well, I've never had them break in the work break. This one came back from a shipment, and these two are still inflated, but this one's popped, this one's popped, this one's popped. This one's, that's pop. So that one, that one broke. I don't know what happened. Plastic wrap on a stick, right here. I have it, it's ready. Order from Amazon, right. So this is my plastic wrap on a stick and it's green. It's actually kind of clear with a green tint. This is great. Hey, so I'm gonna wrap these plates ready to go. Hangers on it, it's signed. Uh, Home Depot. This came from Home Depot. Staples has it too. Yeah, I just happened to be in there when I needed it that day. <laughs> I'm good, Justin. Thanks. So I'm going to wrap this in bubble. And first I wrap it with a pretty big piece and I'm going over the ends really well. I, I have a few mugs, a few mugs and cups, yes. So this is sealed, this is wrapped up, right? Now to hold this down. Bubble down. What do you mean, no? See what? Bubble down, Judy. So there's the bubble, bubble side down. So this is the first layer. Um, museum work. Okay. Yes, I know. I mean, I, I <laughs> Judy's, Judy's my new agent, so you can um, refer all questions about purchasing work to Judy Table. Judy? Yes, contact Judy. So I'm using the, the plastic, <laughs> and she won't take 50%. Right, Judy? <laughs> so I just wrap it with the plastic to hold the bubble wrap down. Only 49, she's cutting me a break. And then you can buy these dispensers with little serrated edges and they'll tear. I went the cheap route and I just bought that. So now you ignore me. Wait, did I ignore a comment? No, I'm sorry, ask me again. I'm not meaning to ignore anybody ever. So if you ask me a question and I missed it, I'm sorry, I wasn't meaning to ignore you. Please ask again. So that's one layer of bubble on this. I do make mugs. I do. I don't have many. Um, currently, I have about... I don't really make mugs a lot because that's not... A, I don't really make a lot of functional. So I have a mug like this. Grenade mug with carving. This is all hand carved. This is on my Etsy page. You could buy this mug right now. So can't see the price. <laughs> no, you could. It's on my Etsy page. So this one is available. And it's the only one I currently have up there. Gone. All right. So there's one layer of bubble. 
And I'm gonna do another layer exactly like I just did with more bubble. And I'm actually reusing this bubble from work that just came back to me. But I mean, it can be any bubble that you have. And I like the small size bubble, but whatever works for you. You could use the big, it's just bulky and it's really hard to wrap the pieces well in the big bubble. So I'm gonna cut this here. There's some old packing tape from where it came from and I just don't want that on there. Whew, gone, done with that, don't need that. So I'm just gonna wrap it up with one more layer. I'm just folding this in. You know, and if you had a really deep form, you could put bubble wrap on the inside to cushion it. You had to buy all new. Um, this isn't dirty, like nasty dirty. <laughs> it's just a little, it just came off another piece, so I just cut it down. I don't know much about Artful, Artful Home. I hear quite a few people sell through there, but um, I don't know. What did you think about that experience? So I'm just going to wrap this again really well with the clear plastic. Cling, the cling wrap. So far, so good. I don't know if that's for me. I don't think it is. Okay. So plate number one, packed ready to go. So here's one plate. Here's the same size plate before. So here's a before shot. Here's an after packed and ready to go. All bubble wrapped and ready. So in the box you want to have at least two to three inches of packing material on the bottom. I'm using bubble. I mean I'm using peanuts but you can use whatever you want. I have about four inches so I'm going to dump some extra out. I'll be using it on the top. Okay, so now I have about, I'd say two, almost three inches in there. And I'm going to nest the plate in the center. So that plate, that plate's down in there now. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other plate, this one here. And it will set right on top of that plate that's in there already. And what I will do is then fill the whole thing with bubble. Um, on the sides, and packing peanuts too, I think. Or maybe I'll just use all packing peanuts. So I'm just wrapping this bubble side down. And so I'm just getting the corners really well. Face to face or back to back? Um, actually stacking foot to face. Foot to face is how I usually do it. So they'll nest in because this foot will fit in the face of the other one. So that's my first layer of bubble. And I find if I do two layers of bubble I'm good um, because of all the packing material that I use. Of course if you're doing sculptures or something with funky parts you might need to get a little more inventive. Foot in the face. <laughs> foot to face. That's uh, also foot and mouth, right? Put your foot, put your foot in your mouth. <laughs> Done. I will call you, Judy. We still have to discuss the opening, whether I'm going to be able to make that or not. All right, so I need another layer of bubble to wrap up. Let's see. Here's a little bit here. I'm just going to wrap this around. Okay. Bye Judy. Have a good day. I'll catch you later. I'm going to put on the interior, like I was mentioning, if you had a deep plate, you might want to put in the center before you start packing a bit of bubble. So I'm going to do that on this one. I don't really need to, but since I mentioned it, I thought I'd show how I do that. So you just put the bubble in, and then you just wrap the rest of it over. And that's it. It's pretty good getting there. I think I want 
another piece for the ends. So the edges of my plates are the most fragile parts, so I want to make sure I have lots of bubble on those edges. Alright, we're going to... Now you could use tape, like if you didn't have this lovely plastic dispenser thing, you could use tape to hold your, your bubble together. It's kind of a pain, I think, to use that much tape. And it might be pricier, too. I'm not sure. But since I found this guy, this little saran wrap dispenser, this is how I pack everything. And if you're just tuning in, I am packing work to send to the clay studio. I've got two plates I'm sending down that are going to be in the clay studio national exhibition. Opening May 6th. You hate, right, the clear tape. Well, I just had to cut some off, some bubble wrap that came back to me, and I just have to chuck it now. You can't reuse it. Now, the great thing about this is I unpacked work this morning, and this is my old, the people nicely reused this. Um, not great looking, but they actually wrapped it like this around my pieces to send it home to me. So this is... This is how I got it. <laughs> this is how it came back on there. So instead of using their own saran wrap um, for packing, they reused mine um, like this. Like that's really awesome, huh? That's great reuse of material. Yeah, but if it had been tape, if I had taped these and sent it, they couldn't have reused it. Right? They would have had to... Well, maybe they could have reused it. That would have been a heck of a mess. <laughs> so, plate number two is ready to go in the box. And I'm going to sit that down in. So I'm going to pull this up here so you guys can see down in. So in here I have one plate very well wrapped with, with bubble. And then a second plate that I'm just going to sit on top of it for now with bubble, right? So that's, I'm going to tilt you down a little. So now I'm going to take packing peanuts. I think I'm just going to use the packing peanuts on the inside because the gallery I'm sending it to lets me use packing peanuts. And I'm just going to fill with the packing peanuts. Now that's not enough, but I'm not done. So I'm going to spread them out. Now I'm going to reach down in and I'm just going to grab that second plate um, there, it's just two pieces in here. What I usually do is I write on the box, I'll write what's in the box, and then I'll have a sheet of paper on the top saying what is in this box. And each piece has its title written on the back, so they'll be able to just turn the piece over and see the name of the piece. But actually, that's a very good idea to stick the name of it on it. And I could do that. I could do that. I could do it right now. I mean, I could just pull it out and write on this, let me get a piece of paper, and I could pull my other one out because it's just packing peanuts that I have to move, right? And I could write the title and stick a card in. Did, yeah, no, it's a good idea, you're right. It's a very good idea. So let me grab some paper and I'll write, let me go do that and I'll write that on there. It'll make their life easier, right? At the clay studio when they open it up, they'll be happier. So I have these cards. They came, I have no idea what they came with, but I've got them. So I think the title of this one is Humvee and Purple Pansies. And then I'll just put my name. like that. So now I made a little label and I will just thank you for that suggestion. So that one's done. Now I'm going to pull out the other one and quickly write the title of the other one. Organize. <laughs> I know. 
Well, I try to be organized. Um, you know, when, when I'm doing stuff for my own sake, I try to be organized. And I used to take photos of the pieces and print them out and stick them on the boxes when I would ship them, like on the outside. So you would have, um, oh, like here. So this was used once already. It has my name on the, this is the inner box. On it is my name, my phone number, my email address. I'll turn it this way. My email address and the piece that's in here. Yeah, so this was um, 28 little plates, small plates that are an installation, and they were all in this one box. So they didn't have, um, they did have individual titles, but they were part of a larger piece, so it wasn't quite the same thing. So this one in here is called Cherry Blossom. I'm going to put my name. And that way it's good. So they have this piece wrapped. They know what it is when they're getting it, right? So they're all set to go for that. And then the other piece that I set over here, same thing. So I'm going to have to dump some peanuts out because now my box is way too full. But that's okay because I've got this big box here. That's going to be my outer box. I always double pack when I ship ceramics. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anybody else that doesn't double pack. Um, you know, when <laughs> once I sent stuff to my mom when I was an undergrad student, I sent her some mugs and I didn't double pack them, and they were all smashed, completely ruined, every single thing. So now I double pack everything. So on top of this will also go the packing list, which tells everything that's in here. So that'll be in here. And then in my outer box, I will have a copy of the shipping form that they can keep for the reference. But also if something happens and someone opens this box, which they shouldn't, but if that should happen, they have a copy of who it's going to, where it's coming from, and what's in it. So that's just a little something else. And that's important when you're shipping overseas because you have to do customs. And sometimes they do open the boxes and search what's in there. So I have about an inch and a half of space on each side. Three inches of packing material on the bottom. Right. So you might not open until you're about to hang it. So just... Well, now they're ready to go. They're all labeled, so thank you very much. And then everybody at the gallery will really like me because I'm that organized artist that sent everything with their labels, right? So that's a big win for me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to top this off. A little more packing material. All right, so in here goes... This is my contract for the show, and this is the inventory list of the pieces I'm sending, and this is my contract sign. Hey, thanks for joining. I'm packing. You're catching the very end. I already bubble wrapped everything, and it's ready to go. So this will just sit on top of this outer box, which I will seal up. I'll, I'll rewrite the name of this, so let's do that right now. I dropped my saran wrap. So here, the only difference that I have on this is that what's in here. So what's in here is Humvee and purple pansies. I'm going to take this old piece of tape off. And cherry blossom. So these are the two pieces that are in here. That's it. So it's, it just needs, this will be taped shut. Hi. And it will go inside this bigger box that's 20 inches. It's a 20 inch by 20 inch by 20 inch. So let me put this out there so you can see. So this box here, I'm a ceramic artist and I'm packing work to ship 
to a show that I have coming up. Enjoy your drawing class. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. So I'm packing. I packed some work, and now I'm gonna put it in this bigger box so I can ship it. It's not exciting, but it's a necess it's a necess ah, a necessary evil of being an artist, right? You've got to ship your work. So I want to have a good four inches on the bottom of this. You're welcome. The show is the Clay Studio National at the Clay Studio in Philly. So if anybody's in Philly, the opening is May 6th. You can check it out. And you can see these pieces there live in person. So this is full of packing peanuts on the bottom. Let me pull, let me pull this over a little more so you can see down in better. Hi. So I will fill around the outside here with other packing material. So I have these air pillows. And I'm just going to fill the side with those. And I have a big pile over here from some other shipments. And I'm not taping this yet because I'm just doing this for demo. I want to I wanna write a couple of the things on my contract before I send it out. Ooh, here's some more. And so you fill this up with any, you can use any kind of packing material you choose. And then I'll put a layer of these across the top and then seal it up. And that'll be it. I'll seal it up, put my packing label on it. Pillow, air pillows on your puppet bed. Not foam pillows. You don't have foamy pillows, you have air pillows. So that's it. That's, that's packing ceramics for you. So if you're ever shipping ceramics, you want to double box, only air, you want to make sure you double box your work to prevent it from getting broken because the um, FedEx driver, they're just going to throw this box. I mean, they're going to pick it up from me and be very sweet and nice and carry it to their truck. But as soon as they get it in their truck, they're going to kick it, they're going to throw it, they're gonna, it's, it's going to get beat up. So you have to make sure you double box, because if not, your stuff will be shattered. It'll just be shards of broken pottery, broken dreams, tears for days. It'll be horrible and awful. Everybody will be crying. I'm an expert packer. I am. I've, I've packed a lot of pots now. So that's my packing scope. I'm done. I'm more to pack. I've got more work. I have to pack urns. So I've got this pair of urns. This is one, and I have its twin. I'm packing this up, and then I've got three more plates to pack up, and um, that will be my day. My whole day is nothing but packing. It's like moving on small scale. Thanks, Toby. All right, so that's it. I'm uh, going to keep packing, and hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll catch you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Catch you guys later. You're welcome, Emily. Yeah, I mean, does anybody have any more questions before I go quickly? Last minute stuff they want to toss out to me? Um, yeah. I show everything, I know. I'm showing every single thing so you know how to do it. I didn't show taping, you know. Uh, tape is this. I'll show you the tape. I use just some clear packing tape. That's it. And you just seal your box up with it, and that's it. So here it is. Hi. I had a tape gun. I broke it. Yeah, so now I have to use this. I have my broken tape gun. And I don't want to, I didn't buy another one. I should, but um, now I just use this. This is like the manual version. You got to roll it out and cut it with scissors and and what happens is this, you lose the end every time, right? And then you're sitting there forever with your fingers picking, 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 trying to get it open. It, and yeah, it's a pain. So anyhow, that's the end of the packing scope. Um, I'm not doing anything else exciting. If I do, I will share it. If not, I will catch you guys another time. So bye all, take care, and happy Tuesday.